few weeks ago, we began a series, and you, you can start my clock, yes. We began a series entitled Limitless, and the focus or the theme of this series is focusing on God's limitless nature. At the beginning of the series, I asked Pastor Michael Kay, what, what, what was God saying to him, to us? And he said that he believed that this series is about you and I not focusing on our circumstances, not focusing on other people, or even focusing on ourselves, but that God wanted us to focus on his limited nature. So this is our fourth lesson of a, I think he said, an eight-lesson series. The subtopic for today's lesson is not limited by sickness and disease. Will you say that? Not, not limited by sickness and disease. Will you say that one more time? Not limited by sickness and disease. Let's recap our first three weeks. In week one, our major take-home statement was God is not limited by our environment or personal condition. In week two, our major take-home statement was God is not limited by normal channels of supply. And last week, week three, our take-home statement was God is not limited by time. Amen. In this fourth lesson, and I would encourage all of you to go back and listen to the app. It's on the app. Listen to these lessons over because there will be things that you're here in your own time that maybe you didn't hear in the setting. Every week, even though I may be in Columbus or somewhere else, every week I go back and listen to what pastor taught. Every week. Every week. Every week. It will help you to go back and listen to these lessons. Our take-home point for today's lesson is God is not limited by sickness and disease. So we have the, where we're going in the lesson, I'm going to give you two proof texts. After we explain the proof text, then we're going to go to a story, an illustration of God's unlimited power in the lives of two individuals. And then we're going to see what can we draw from their lives. Our first text is Acts chapter 10, verse 38. And we'll look at it in the New King James Version. I'm quite sure they'll put it up on the monitor. It says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all, that were oppressed of the devil. And if you read the rest of the text, it says, for God was with him. Now, throughout the course of Jesus' ministry, he often encountered large numbers of people who were oppressed by the devil. The word oppressed means to exercise harsh control over. It means to use one's power against another. Now, when we look at Acts chapter, two, chapter 10, verse 38, there are two things presented to us in juxtaposition. And let's look at the text, and let's look at these two things. Number one, we see in the text that the devil had power that he exercised harshly 
to keep people in sickness and disease. Now, I want you to think about that statement for just a moment. I'm going to say it. It's not up on the monitor, but I'm going to say this statement. I want you to listen to the statement. The devil had power that he exercised harshly to keep people in. Come on, say, keep people in. Say, keep people in. Keep people in sickness and disease, say, and sickness and disease. Allow me to illustrate this for just a moment. If you can imagine in your mind, I'm on this stage now, and even though you cannot see it, I am in a square. It's a invisible, it's a invisible or crystal clear glass square. It has four sides. When I move up toward the north, the glass stops me, okay? When I turn east and move in this direction, I run up against the glass. When I turn to the south and I move toward the south, I get so far and I hit the glass. Then when I turn to the west, I can move to a, a, a certain extent, but I run up against the glass. So say this after me, north, north. east, east. South. south, west. So I'm limited by this glass. I'm confounded by the glass. Say this after me, B, B. Do, do, go, go. Have. have. When I move to B, the glass stops me. When I turn and move to do, the glass stops me. When I turn and move to go, the glass says you can't go this way. And then when I turn over here, I want to have something, but the glass stops me from having. Come on, say this. Be. Be. Do. Do. Go. Go. And have. have. Everything that I want to be. Everything that God wants me to be yes, is on the other side of the glass. So even though I know I should be it, Come on. and God wants me to be it, yes, the glass stops me from being that. Everything that I want to do, Come on. things that God wants me to do, Come on. I want to do it, but the glass stops me. And everywhere I want to go, and God wants me to go, the glass stops me. And everything I want to have, and everything God wants me to have, the glass stops me. Come on, say, be, be. Do, do, go, go. and have. have. I'm limited by the glass. I can see it but I can't get it. So everything that God wants me to be, the glass is stopping me. Everything God wants me to do, the glass is stopping me. Everywhere God wants me to go, I can see it, but the glass is stopping me. And everything I want to have and God wants me to have, the, God, the glass stops me. Sickness and disease limits me from being. Sickness and disease limits me from doing. It's sickness and disease that limits me from going. And sickness and disease limits me from having. So now with that illustration in mind, 
Listen to the statement from Acts chapter 10. The devil had power that he exercised harshly to keep people in, to keep people in sickness and disease. So when we look at this first part, we see from Acts chapter 10, verse 38, that God was not the source of the sickness and disease because God would want us to be limited. We also see that there was no purpose attached to the sickness and the disease. So stay with the word. Just stay with the word. Word said nothing about God was going to teach them something. God was going to perfect them. God is taking the... No, just stay with the word. Now, when we look at the second part of the text, Acts chapter 10, something else is presented to us, and that is God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power to do good and heal all that were oppressed of the devil. So when we look at this text, this this part of the text, it communicates to us that Jesus' healing ministry was a direct revelation of the nature and the will of God. His healing ministry was a direct revelation of God's nature because God's nature is that he's good. And the Bible said Jesus went about doing good. It is a revelation of God's will because it says God anointed him. And it says that God was with him. So if God anointed him and God, uh, God was with him, it's obvious that God did not want the people to be sick. There's something else that we see from the text. We see from the text that the anointing that Jesus had and the Holy Spirit who Jesus had was greater than the power of the devil. Because the Bible says that Jesus with this power and with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says he healed all that were oppressed of the devil. So it's the anointing. Now, now listen at that. It's the anointing that breaks the glass and allows you to be. It's the anointing that breaks the glass that allows you to do what God wants you to do. It's the anointing that breaks the glass that allows you to go wherever you want to go and wherever God wants you to go. It's the anointing that breaks the glass to allow you to have whatever God wants you to have. Anybody limitless believers here? Okay, now. Let's look, at, let's look at another text, Matthew 4, 23. Matthew 4, 23, verse 24, in the Passion Translation. Now, listen carefully. It says, Jesus ministered from place to place throughout all the province of Galilee. He taught in the synagogue, preaching the wonderful news of the kingdom, and healing, now listen at the text, healing every kind of sickness and disease. Come on, say that. Come on, say it again. His fame spread throughout all Syria. Many people who were in pain and suffering, say it again, with every kind of illness, with every kind of illness. Now watch this were brought to Jesus for their healing. Epileptics, paralytics, those tormented by demonic powers were all set free. Now, when you look at the text, the text says every kind. 
And if we're not careful, we'll, we'll just read past that. But it says every kind of sickness, every kind of disease, every kind of illness, every kind, every kind. You know, the problem with sometimes reading the Bible is that we don't put ourselves in it. So if he healed every kind, yes, sir. Yes, sir. every kind of disease, yes, sir. every kind of sickness, yes, sir. every kind of illness, yes, sir. that would include yours. Yes. But every kind will not mean anything to you until you put yourself in there. Now, every kind won't mean anything until we categorize every kind. We have to put some names to every kind because we can just read over that. So every kind would include incurable diseases. That means diseases that the doctor says there's no help. There is nothing medical science can do for you. That would include infectious diseases, diseases caused by germs and caused by viruses. But let's put some names to infectious disease. Measles and flu, hepatitis, HIV, herpes, COVID-19. These are infectious diseases. Every kind will include mental illnesses. But let's add some names. Depression, anxiety, bipolar, psychotic, dementia, Alzheimer's, every kind. Let's talk about nervous disorders, strokes, paralysis, epilepsy, cerebral palsy, Parkinson disease. Let's put some names to every kind. Heart disease, cancer, lung disease, kidney disease, liver disease, brain disease, skin disease, sexually transmitted diseases, muscular diseases, lupus. Come on, let's put some names to it. Genetic diseases, sickle cell. Let's put some names to it. Down syndrome. Let's put some names to it. Learning disabilities. The Bible says that he healed every kind of sickness, every kind of disease, every kind of illness, and every kind would include yours. Are there any limitless believers here? I'm in the right place. We're in the right place. This is the breeding ground for miracles, isn't it? Okay, okay, okay. That's what our pastor said. It's the breeding ground for miracles. Now, let's go to a story. Let's go to a story. Let's go to a story. Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 through 31. Matthew 9, 27 through 31 in the New King James Version. I want you to look at the text. Listen very carefully. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. When he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, do you believe, he said to the blind men, do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said to Jesus, yes, Lord. <laughs> they were limitless believers. They say, yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith. Now, remember, y'all, we're not going to have a healing line, so you better start grabbing. <laughs> hey, there ain't nothing going to be at the end, so you better, start, <laughs> you better start grabbing, okay? Now, listen. 
and there according to your faith be it unto you. And the eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no man know it, but when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. Now, let's look at the text, and then we're going to ask two questions about the blind man, and then we're going to ask you two questions, because the text won't mean anything to us if we don't put ourselves in it. Okay, let's, let's talk about the two blind men. Now, the blind men had severe limitations, severe limitations. Number one, they had physical limits. In other words, there were things that they could not do. And principally, because they were blind, they were unable to see. Say unable. unable. Are there any things that you're unable to? To do. So they had some physical limits, but they also had some lifestyle limits. The ancient world that they lived in didn't really care about them and placed things in the environment to accommodate their situation. There was no Braille signs. Braille is a, a writing system. It, it's a system of communication that the visually impaired can touch. They can read and they can communicate through touch. No Braille signs, not on buildings, not on doorways. No guide dogs, no hired drivers. They had lifestyle limitations. They had learn, learning limits. No audio books. No audio books that they could listen to. No computer streams like we have where they can pull up stuff. They had safety limits, no way to protect themselves from thievery, from robbery. They had severe limits. Maybe you have some limits. Sometimes our glass box that we're in may give more pe some people more leverage, but it's still a limit. Other folk box is really tight, but it's still a box. Whether it's a tight box or whether it has more space to it, it's still a limit. And God doesn't want us to be limited. Now, two, the Bible says, and we, we read this in Mark 10, it says with men, it is, talk to me, but not with, for with God all things are, okay, we got to ask some questions here. These two men apparently heard something about a limitless God. Because whenever we hear the good news, we fall into three categories, one of three categories. We either are unbelievers, or we are limited believers, or we are limitless believers. So it's obvious that they fell in the category of being limitless believers. Now here's a statement. And then we're going to ask you some questions before we close from this text. This is the take-home statement. I want you to write this down. I want you to make a mental note of this. What you receive from God will be a reflection of what you believe about him and what you believe about you. Okay? What you receive from God will be a reflection of what you believe about him and what you believe about you. Now think about that. Meditate on that for a moment. So let's look at them. What did these two blind men believe about God? When we look at the text, we realize that they believed God was, Jesus was the Messiah because they call him the son of David, which is a messianic 
title. That tells us that they were declaring, by calling him son of David, the Messiah, they were declaring their faith in him, in Jesus, as the fulfillment of all the Old Testament prophecies concerning the Messiah. Now, watch this. Write this down. And I told, I told my pastor, I said, now, I never saw that in the Word. I appreciate you for showing me that. But write this text down. It said, Isaiah 35, 4 through 5, it prophesied that the Messiah, when he came, he will open the eyes of the blind. So when they said, son of David, have mercy on us. They were saying, you the Messiah. You've come to open the eyes of the blind. So they believe in spite of, now follow me, they believe in spite of their present circumstances that Jesus, the Messiah, had the ability to open up their eyes. Okay, okay. But now what about you? See, we New Testament believers. We have a greater covenant. So what, 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 what about you? Do you believe that Jesus is the same? Hebrews believes it. 13.8 says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you believe that God is the same? God believes it because he said in Malachi 3, 6, I'm the Lord and I change not. Talk about what you believe. What do you believe? Now listen at this. Do you believe that God is not limited by sickness and disease? Do you believe it? We ain't talking to ask you to do nothing. Do you believe it? So you believe that he's not limited by sickness and disease. Acts 10, 38 brought up the devil, so let's talk about him. Do you believe that God took away Satan's power? Come on, talk to me now. Do you believe that Jesus took away the devil's power? The Bible says in Hebrews 2, 4 that Jesus went through death so that he might destroy him. Now listen at the text. That had the power of death. So the devil doesn't have any more power to erect a glass ceiling of sickness and disease in your life. Is that right? I'm just talking about what you believe now. Just talking about what you believe. Not asking you to do anything, just talking about what you believe. But Jesus said that Matthew 28, after the resurrection, he said, all power. All power in heaven and in earth is in my hand. Then he said, you go. He gave us the power. So that means that the devil is operating in the earth illegitimately. In other words, he has no power to erect a ceiling around your life with sickness and disease. Wait, wait, wait. Do you believe it? We ask you to do that in this, in this lesson. In this lesson, we ask you to do nothing. We just ask you, do you believe that? Okay, now, let's see what they thought or believed about themselves. The two blind men believed in a limitless version of themselves in spite of their present condition. Ooh, that preach right there. Now, that preach right there. Now, they believed in a limitless version of themselves in spite of their present condition. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they had to overcome three things that we have to overcome. They had to overcome their present reality, their present condition, their present adversity. They had to overcome that because our present condition speaks to us. Yes, it does. 
and their present reality, their present dysfunction spoke to them and said, you cannot do this. But they had to also uh, overcome the obstacle of society because society had labeled them, had put a tag on them and said, you cannot have this kind of job. We can't hire you for this because you have this. But they had to also come overcome the same devil that we have to overcome. But now listen carefully. The two blind men refuse to attach their identity to their dysfunction. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was a curveball one. Yeah. They refused to attach their identity to their dysfunction. And the manifestation of their healing is evidence of what they believed about God and what they believed about themselves. They did not allow their dysfunction to identify them. They did not allow society's tags and labels to establish their identity. And they certainly didn't allow the devil, who's a liar, to establish their identity. But now we gotta ask you some questions. Oh, now we see what they did. What about you? What do you believe about yourself? It's just me and you talking. I'm not gonna tell anybody. No, 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 not what you believe in church. Not what you believe around other saints. But come on, talk to me, come on, talk to me. What you really believe about you. Now listen, do you identify yourself with your dysfunction? Come on, talk. We ain't talking about you now. We ain't talking about the two blind men. Who are you? Who do you believe you are? Okay. Well, let me throw some things out or ask you. So, are you the alcoholic? Are you the diabetic? Are you the disabled? Are you the impaired? Are you the disordered? Are you the psychotic? Who are you? Because see, think about it. Our condition try to establish our identity. Society tells us that we're the disabled. And we say, that's my parking space. I'm not saying don't drive in it, but I'm just, listen, I'm not asking you to do nothing. I'm just saying, how do you identify yourself? I'm I'm not asking you not to go in the parking space. I'm not asking you to turn down the disability check. You may need it. But we got to first, we can't get to the power of God until we see ourselves the way God sees us. So who are you? Are you the asthmatic? Just me and you now. Just me and you talking. Who What do you believe about yourself? You know, it's interesting. I I, I don't have but a few more minutes because I'm going to follow my past to (laughs) see. But it's interesting. We, We say things in church, but we don't really believe. I prayed for a lady years ago. She had an issue in her body. 
And she wanted me to pray for it. I don't know, I think I was around some she had, she wanted me to pray for it. And then I was going to pray for her hand, something in her arm, but she said, mm. She said, I don't want to pray for that. She, didn't want, she wanted to pray for the arthritis, but she was getting a check for her arm. <laughs> real life story, real life. Not, no, no, no. She, she told me, don't pray for that. <laughs> now, listen carefully. I want you to do nothing crazy. We're not talking about denial. We're not talking about you denying your situation. We're not talking about that. What we're talking about, how do you identify yourself? Because you and your dysfunction are not the same. That's your dysfunction. That's not you. We're not talking about willpower because somebody said, well, you know, since I'm this, I'm just going to not take my medicine. I ain't going to no doctor. I ain't doing no, no, that's willpower. That's you trying to make something happen. I ain't taking no more, I ain't taking no more disability. No, 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 I didn't tell you to do that. We ain't talking about that. We talking about what you believe. We pastor take us over into what we do, some other lesson. Yes, sir. We just talking about what do you believe. Yes, sir. Because the scripture says, in all these things. In your dysfunction, in your disability, in your sickness, in your disease, in your uh, impairment, your disorder, the Bible says in all these things. We are, now this your identity, this your identity, this your identity. We are more than conquerors. That's who you are. Now, you can let the world labor you. You can let people labor you. You can have all these labels, but God says you're more than a conqueror. First Peter 2.24 says, who his own self in his own body on the tree. He bore our sins, and by his stripes, you were healed. Didn't say you were going to get healed. It said you were healed. Here. So how are you going to identify yourself? Not talking about what you do. I didn't say nothing about doing nothing. I didn't say stop. We talking about what you believe. Do you believe you're the healed? Or are you trying to get your blessing? Do you believe that you're healed? That's your identity. You are the healed. Right up while you taking the medication, you are the healed. Because your dysfunction is over here, and you are over here. And, and, I, and I'm, 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 I'm through. <laughs> Listen, I'm through. I am through. I'm through. Hey, hey, I, I, I ain't coming back tomorrow. I ain't coming back next week. I ain't come, past to come back next week. He gonna sit in that seat. Ha, 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 ha.